radar stations have feelings too, you know. It's not a walkthrough, playthrough, with you, anything like that. It's just me playing the game badly so you can see what it looks like. Load please. Here we go. Oh yes. Full motion rendered stuff. Because you know what I think about that kind of thing. But here we are. This is Hover Strike on the Jaguar CD, or rather for the Jaguar CD, being played on an Atari Jaguar with a Jaguar game drive from Retro HQ. Not much I can say about this. It, it's very much of its time. Unconquered land, because the frame rate meant it took them too long to get there. You fear the worst for the planet's missing colonists. The Federation has lost contact with the distant outpost for over six months. A reconnaissance mission has discovered that the Terrakian pirate, Terrakian pirates. Their deadly machines patrol every section of the surface. Furthermore, the Terrakians have installed an atmospheric cannon which makes invasion plans impossible. What's with an atmospheric cannon? Does it fire atmosphere at you? Like, he here's a big ball of stuff you can breathe. Federation has chosen... I can't read that now. It's got... Your vehicle is a state-of-the-art armoured hovercraft because armour being heavy obviously hovers really well. Um, Equipped with rapid fire cannons and powerful missiles, anti grav, something, something. Okay, we're at least not using like spinning fans to hover, so maybe it's viable. Eliminate the atmospheric cannon to make way for the Federation invasion armada. Good luck, we're going to need it. Programming and game designed by these people, who I didn't let you read because I'm mean. Easy, yes, please. Stealth attack. No, look, this is me, I don't do stealth. There's a galaxy. I haven't eaten galaxy chocolate for ages. It gives me a sore throat. Uh, knock the base's communications by destroying the four radar installations. Okay, yeah, that looks fair enough. That's something we can recognize as a rep. That's actually quite good. Okay. Okay. So we've got a radar. We, oh yeah, you sod off. Oh, hello. Okay, up is not forward. Neither is that. Okay, A to go forward. I don't know what that does. That's okay. That makes us go down. That's weird. I don't know where we're going. There's a grip, big green blob on the radar. We'll go towards that because it might be something big and green. Ah, uh, it's gonna take a while. Hello. Oh, A up. There's the radar, let's blow it up. Because that's what you do to radar, hey. Hello, what's that? It's like a big robot lizard. Well, it looks like one anyway. It's, it's chucking missiles at me like you wouldn't believe, but I'm like, I can't, it, it, maneuvering is so not an easy thing. I want twin sticks. <laughs> and I've got no reverse. How do you re No, there is no reverse. Or if there is, I don't know what it is. I mean, I've got all the number buttons, but I'm not pushing them. All right, I'm gonna push. Whoa, okay, I didn't know that was there. <laughs> that might make life easier. I wonder if we have like targeting or is that just like, what does button two do? What's that? Okay. What does button three do? Oh, that chucks another missile. What does four do? Oh! I don't know if that helps. A lot of buttons that seem to do the same thing. Whatever. It's weird. It's like just this big metal landscape that you can go over, which is handy. It surprises me that you can. Like, we're, we're in a hovercraft, you wouldn't think. 
Well, I guess they called them hovercraft, the, those big things in, um, in the Matrix, and they didn't look like anything I would call a hovercraft. I'm trying to find that green blob. Oh, hello, we're not blowing enough of this thing up. Okay, I've left a few bits. Oh. What? Here we go. Someone's shooting at me, but I'm going to take out the radar first, because I'm dumb like that. Where is it? Are there bits of it left? I don't know. Where is it? I'm probably stuck. Oh, hello. Yeah. Okay, cool. We killed it. Because you can kill radar stations. Radar stations have feelings too, you know. I, I've got no idea. Here we go. Hello. You sod off. And I'm going to... Oh. Well, I was going to blow him up with a missile, but he died before I could do it. So that's all right then. Oh, yay! You don't hear that very often when I'm playing. Yeah, so... It functions as a game. Look at that. I like the texture mapping. I mean, it, it, it's all... I'm getting the feeling for what a half-decent Atari Jaguar CD game is is all about. You've got your full motion sequences like this that look incredibly dated, but you know, it, it was that's just where 3D rendering was at at the time, pretty much, unless you had like silicon graphics, indigos, and all of that kind of thing, um, which they probably didn't. That was probably done on, on an Amiga, really. Um, you get to your game proper and it's all very low polygon count 3D with very minimal chunky texture mapping and like guru shading and movement is basic up down left and right well back if you're lucky we didn't have a back on this um, physics are non-existent really there's like no inertia, there's no gravity to speak of. Move, movement is you go where you point it and it, maybe you accelerate and maybe you don't. You just like go, perhaps. Uh, it's all very, very, very primitive. But when it's done to a certain standard, it can potentially be fun. Some games are more fun than others. Um, this one functions as a game. Is it fun? Not really. No. No, it's not. The thing I think, that the conclusion I'm coming to, because I keep thinking in terms of value for money, n not of the game drive. This, this thing, this game drive serves its purpose for me perfectly. I wanted to bring you videos of these games. So, perfect. But for a gamer, is there any point whatsoever in buying an Atari Jaguar? Never mind the Jaguar CD. In fact, especially not the Jaguar CD, because the games on it, you know, it's an expensive and fragile and not entirely reliable piece of hardware, the Jaguar CD. Um, and the games on it, while you can only get them on that, if, you, if, if you're a collector and you want some gaming history, Great, totally get it, absolutely knock yourself out, splash your money about and, and collect, collect them all. But if you're a gamer, the Jaguar and Jaguar CD and their games don't make sense in the way that, say, uh, I don't know, a Sega Saturn does. Th those are kind of pretty dated games and not all of them are great, but enough of them are great. 
and it's worth splat. I mean, you can spend crazy money on something like Radiant Silver Gun, but when you buy that, you're getting a fantastic game. You can spend crazy money on Jaguar CD games, and you're getting something that at best just about functions as a game, but my god, it's not fun. <laughs> <laughs> if you just if you just want a game on original hardware and you, you you want fun no I wouldn't okay ran over let's record something else thank you for watching hello today's question for Q&A is gonna be quite a short one <laughs> or at least the answer is uh, the question is from Noodles477, linked to their channel down there. They ask, Hey Steve, do you use SCART for your systems for best picture? Um, yes. <laughs> Thank you for... Uh, I mean, what, what can I say? Um, over there, PS4, that's HDMI, PS3, HDMI, PS2, component, Mega Drive, SCART, um, Sega Saturn, SCART, Sega Dreamcast, SCART, Atari 2600, that is a RF, because there is no other output on it, um, Vic 20, SCART, Commodore 64, SCART, um, Atari Jaguar, SCART, um, Sinclair Spectrum, I've got a composite mod on that, so it's uh, it's just the video out is uh, it, it's component uh, composite and it goes into a SCART adapter, so SCART ish. Um, Acorn Electron, SCART. Uh, Nintendo 64, SCART. Um, RF, RF, no video output at all. It's Fairchild Channel F, RF, Enterprise 64, RF, um, Virtual Boy, obviously. Yeah. We at SCART, um, NES, RF, SNES, SCART, Vectrex. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Xbox 360, HDMI, uh, Apple Mac, well, it's got built in screen. Um, ColecoVision, that's RF. Dragon 32, SCART. A um, couple of Apple laptops, they're uh, obviously built in screen, so yeah. Um, Atari. XEGS. I, do you know? I can't remember what output I've what I've got for that. I think I've got a SCART lead for that. I think so. Don't remember. Yeah. Um, there's an Amiga 4000 down there as well. That's got its own monitor. I can't even remember what the uh, the connection for the monitor is. It's uh, Amiga video out, so kind of weird. Yeah, oh, Amiga, over there. Um, composite, plugged into SCART adapter. So, yeah, SCART. Um, assorted other things over there, SCART, except the, uh, the, the Neo Geo Mini, which is HDMI. Everything else over there is SCART. Yes, we've got a, a, a NES Mini and PC Engine and Oh, well, we got our, oh god, Atari 7800. The RF output on that thing is absolutely bloody horrible. And I really ought to do a composite mod on that. But I'm, I keep telling myself I'll do it, but I've never got around to it yet. So, one day. Yeah, pretty much. Basically, if it's possible to have SCART on them without modding, I do use SCART wherever possible. Okay, anyone else who's got any questions they would like answering in a video like this, leave a question in the comments below and begin with for Q&A, so I know not to just answer in the comments. And thank you for watching. 
So I said, you can just stick that joystick right up your... Oh, hello. Um, I'm Isambard Montague the Third, And you've been watching Steve Benway, Retro Gaming Collector. If you'd like to see more of his videos, click the subscribe button. And if you'd like to catch up with some of his 1500 videos in his back catalogue, have a look through his playlists. Right, that'll be 50 quid.